Thank you so much. I hope I found you well today. I'm continuing with the subject of the prophetic and today I'm going to be looking on the most essential, significant and important things that are found in the prophetic. And I'm be dealing with the realms of prophecy and ethnic mysteries of the prophetic realm. So in the realms of the prophetic, uh, we have got what we call forensic prophecy. From forensic prophecy, we have got what we call dramatic prophecy. From dramatic prophecy, we have got what we call typological prophecy. From typological prophecy, we have got what we call enigmatic prophecy. From enigmatic prophecy, we have what we call artistic prophecy. So today I'm just going to look on one of the realm of prophecy that is forensic prophecy, of which a lot of people, they find it so interesting when they operate under this realm, that is the realm of forensic. This is a realm in the prophetic which an individual operates and you'll be in a position again to engage yourself in a prophetic dimension for you to operate under prophetic uh, forens out of forensic prophecy. You must be in a position to deep and simmer yourself in a prophetic dimension. So when you are dealing with forensic prophecy, that's when you deal with accurate, precise, definitive and astonishingly details of people. When you are dealing with the details, we are speaking of microscopic details of people whereby you will know their life. You know things that even an ordinary eye and an ordinary person cannot know about. You start now to decipher their residential addresses, cell phone numbers, bank accounts, and work positions you tell them their age you tell them their names names of their relatives cities where they are coming from even countries where they are coming from you even tell them their um, registration numbers of their cars so it becomes so microscopic and detailed when you are dealing with the people that's the realm that a lot of people they always want and find it fussy to operate into and I'm one of the person that has been privileged to operate in this dimension. It's one of the most interesting. You must pray and desire to operate in such a, dy a dimension. So in this uh, realm of the prophetic, this one is the IST, spiritual dimension, in which a believer is catapulted into, into the higher levels of the prophetic accuracy. You will not miss, but you will be catapulted into a higher level of prophetic accuracy. You will start to know nations, even events that are about to transpire upon nations. You will even know the people that God will be using uh, to influence and advance uh, such activities and events. You will know even score lines of teams. It may be a World Cup. It might be an African a national uh, tournament. It may be in Premier Soccer League PSL. You know the results even before they happen. You can even go to the extent of knowing a lot numbers. Then you can play and you'll be in a position to win the lotto. So it's one of the most significant and important uh, dimension that as a believer you must operate into. As I always say that these gifts are not given to apostles, these gifts are not given to prophets, these gifts are not given to teachers, evangelists and, and pastors, uh, but these gifts, they are available for the taking for every believer. So to substantiate the revelation behind forensic prophecy, with reference to scriptural examples, we are going to deal with Acts. In the book of Acts number 9, 10, uh, the Bible says, and a certain a man, or in a certain city there was a man and a disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him said the Lord. So the Lord spoke to Ananias, and when the Lord spoke to Ananias in a vision, he said unto Ananias, Behold, I am here. And he said to God, Ananias, Behold, I am here, O God. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, the first thing, and go into the street which is called the street in that street which is called a uh, street uh, so the first thing that God 
spoke and directed Ananias to do is to go to a street that is called straight. That was the first thing. So that's accurate. That's microscopic. He spoke of the street. And then God, he said, inquire of the house of Judas. So he spoke of the person that owns the house. For one called so, then God spoke to Ananias and gave him the person that he was supposed to be ministering unto. And he's not only called Saul, but he's coming from a place called Tarsus. Then after that, God said, for behold, he prayeth. So God spoke to Ananias, told him the address, told him the house, the owner of the house, the occupant of the house who happens to be Saul, and where Saul originates or the etymology of Saul. And then again, he said and told Ananias what Saul was doing. So which means Saul was not adamant, Saul was not domicile, but he was active, operating in an active zone. And the Bible says, and had sent a vision to a man named Ananias. And when that vision was sent, Paul had already seen Ananias coming to him to minister to him. And the Bible says, then uh, Ananias prayed unto Saul, and Saul received his sight. So there is a lot of accuracy that is there. So the first thing that is that, that God spoke about, he spoke of the name of Saul. The second thing, he spoke of the city, that is the city of Judas. He spoke of the street that is called the uh, street. He spoke as well of the man that Anasinias was supposed to be meeting up by the name Paul and what he was doing, of which Paul was praying. So that's what happens and transpire in the prophetic uh, dimension when you are dealing with forensic prophecy. It tells you things that are quintessential things that are important, things that are essential, things that uh, an ordinary person cannot know. Even when you speak to a person, the person is perturbed, is perplexed, is astonished, he is muffled with such knowledge because this is the information sometimes a person keeps to self, things that people does in their secret time, secret place, things that is transpired years and years ago. So forensic prophecy has got the ability to take you years and years backward and you start now to decipher and smoke out the vestiges of the past, telling a person the place of his or her birth, the person that has received him to life and what was done to such a particular person and the demonic activities that were done to that particular person as well as the grace of God that is upon the very person. So this is a quintessential example of forensic prophecy when you are dealing with forensic prophecy, Acts 10, 9. So we need to continue now to pray, endeavor. As Apostle Paul said, pray for the gift of prophecy. So even if you pray, you can be in a position to operate in such a dimension. As I always say, that whenever you prophesy, it doesn't make you a prophet. It just simply means that you have prophesied. So when now God starts to move you in a prophetic dimension, starts to work with you in a prophetic realm, and unearthing prophetic mysteries, you start to see things that are microscopic, start to operate, you know, in a dimension that the people, your contemporary people that you're dealing with, they'll be in a, not in a position to understand you. That's why some of people, they acquiesced now this gift with um, some satanic activities, they acquiesced again this gift with uh, a lot of uh, uh, demonic secretisms they have acquiesced it again with a little bit of uh, satanic and demonic inducements why because it's a dimension that takes revelation it's a dimension that takes understanding it's a dimension again that takes a lot of uh, sensitivity to the Holy Spirit to operate into and a lot of people they don't have this gift and they don't operate in this dimension. A lot of people, they operate in typological prophecy or dramatic prophecy, but forensic prophecy is for uh, one or two people within a city, one or two people within a church. So when we are dealing with this now, this is what will happen after 
you know god uses you in this dimension he will take your spirit from the realm of humanity and he jettison it into the realm of the spirit whereby there will be a fellowship between your spirit and the spirit of god that gives prophecy because prophecy is given by the spirit of god if you don't have deep communion deep fellowship with the spirit of god you will not be in a position to operate prophetically you will not be in a position again to operate into forensic so again forensic prophecy it calls for seclusion it calls for isolation so people who operate in a crowd they don't operate in this forensic prophecy because it always wants a person to be in his or her private place or position for god to operate and to speak to you and people who operate in prophetic uh, uh, forensic prophecy rather they have got a ministration of angelic ministration of angels each and every time angels they always minister to them angels they always speak to them angels they always come to visit them always they always come when they pray so when you prophesy with gift or in the dimension of the uh, forensic prophecy there's always a ministration of angels thank you so much for listening to this i hope this uh, nuggets that i'm bringing to you they are going to help you and they are still helping you to navigate through life to navigate through uh, callings to navigate through your purposes because God has called you to be a world changer you are not called to be a local champion you are not only called to preach to your uh, location or locality or to your nativity but you have been called to cause impact to the world so the only way a person can be impactful in his generation in his time is when a person amasses wisdom knowledge and understanding so what i'm doing i'm bringing wisdom i'm bringing knowledge that has been concealed and hidden by uh, 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 our predecessors people who came before us they never they took the time to tell us really how it operates they always hide they always conceal. even myself when i was growing up there are some people that I used to ask how to operate prof uh, prophetically, how to operate forensically, so that I may be accurate in my prophecy, I may be detailed in my prophecy. They always tell me that go and pray, or oh, it's all about grace. They always tell me that it's all about election. But as I grew up in this ministry, in the prophetic, I realized that it's all about wisdom, it's all about knowledge, it's all about understanding. The moment you amass knowledge, the moment you amass understanding, you can operate in any dimension. So dimensions are open to people that have got knowledge. Dimensions are open to people that have got the willpower to understand and to know. So for you to operate prophetically, to operate apostolically, to operate forensically, what you need is knowledge. Thank you so much for your time. This is your boy, Brian. Each and every time, I will always come with prophetic nuggets, life nuggets that are going to help you to change life. God bless you.